Now, tonight, we're just before we go into this great church age. Uh, I just hope the Lord pours out His Spirit upon us just and blesses us again. And we can only hit the highlights now because in the great event of coming on, we'd be here all week long. And all last night, we had such a glorious time. Well, now, just before we read the Scriptures, could we just change our, our position for a few moments and stand for a word of prayer? Mm. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we come in the all-sufficient name of the Lord Jesus, knowing that someday You will come. And we are trying to prepare the hearts of the people to receive this great revelation that You are God the living Son of God, not dead but alive forevermore, and living in your church as the witness of Pentecost, of that great time when the time of refreshing would come from the presence of the Lord. We're so glad to enjoy them times down here after 1,900 years. And Father, we humbly bow our heads in respect of these great men down through the ages those stars that you held in your hand, which you said was angels of the church ages, the ministers. How we thank you for great St. Paul of Ephesus. How we thank you for Irenus, oh Lord, Irenus, the great servant of yours. And for St. Martin. And tonight for uh, uh, St. Columbia. Lord, how we thank you for these men in the midst of dark Romanism, paganism, coming into the church. They stood gallant for the Pentecostal message and blessing, speaking in tongues and, and great signs and wonders, the healing of the sick and raising the dead. Thank you, Lord. Many of them, Lord, was pulled apart and killed and fed the lions. Yes, Lord. Great things taking place. The earth is bay with the blood of the righteous. Father, their blood cries out today against that wicked, adulterous church. Yes, Lord. You said someday when you poured the angel, poured his vial upon it, the, the blood of every martyr was found in it. Lord, help us to have be ready to stand now because the time is closing in. As we see this two-horned beast rise up out of the earth, not out of the thickness and multitudes of people, with horns like a lamb, but a speck like the dragon. We believe that hour is close at hand now, yes, Father. Jesus. When these churches just confederated themselves together, making an image unto the beast, and it'll be yes, terrible Lord. on that group, Lord, that won't yes. join. The very boycott will come, but in that hour, you promised to take your church. <laughs> Help us, Lord. Before one drop of water fell, Noah was in the ark. Before the fire could strike Sodom, Lot was gone. Father, we believe before the atomic... The uh, powers ever blow this earth to pieces, the church will be gone. Hallelujah. We're so glad. Glory and we know that the bombs are hanging in the hangars tonight. And we can look towards heaven and see the Son of Man rising from His throne to start towards the earth for the rapture of His church. Know that His precious feet won't touch the sinful earth at that time. For as Rebecca rode the camel and jumped off the camel right between the house of Abraham... Out in the field, she met her bride. Oh, God, in the church shall meet our bride in the air. For we which are alive and remain shall not prevent or hinder those which are asleep. The trumpet of God shall sound the dead, and Christ shall rise first, and we shall be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the field, in the air, and forever be with Him. Oh, help us tonight, Lord. Give us sweetness of our spirits and Take all bitterness and indifference away from us, and may we be so melted with the Holy Spirit. Let the angel of God rule tonight. Lord, I don't know what to say to these people. Now I've got the histories and things wrote down of what you did, but it takes you to interpret the future. So I pray that you'll grant it through Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Now let us turn now to the book of the Revelation. And we're tonight on the church age of the fourth church age, uh, Thyatira, great church age known as the Dark Age. This church age starts in at 606 and ended at 1520. 
I, with all that I could do, picking out many scholars, take, take St. Patrick to be the star or the, each seven stars was the seven angels of the seven church ages. We know tomorrow night, beyond a doubt, Luther and then Wesley. We don't know who this Lady of Sin church, the star will be. It's, we're in the age now. Been since 19 and 6. At the beginning of Pentecost. But there will be an angel rise that will smother out all the dogmas. Take the church ready to go home. Now, some master of, of, in spirit that will rise with signs and wonders. Now, I pray that God will help us to know this. And picking this out, looking through, St. Patrick was a great guy. And getting some of the old ancient manuscripts... St. Patrick was not a Catholic. He protested the Catholic Church. And during the time of the Reformation, that uh, dogma that they had was dug up and proved that St. Patrick protested the Catholic Church. Uh, St. Patrick was more like an organization man. He had his own school. He first, when he was kidnapped on the banks of the sea... Him and his two little sisters that he never heard of no more, they were taken off probably to Rome and sold for slaves. He was taken also and sold as a slave and was given a job herding pigs. He trained dogs to keep, take care of his pigs and so forth and come at different grunts and things that he'd give the dogs. And that finally was a way of escape in the bottom of a boat when the dogs covered him up until he got out into the sea. Later come to his own lovely place, Ireland, and found his mother and father still living. And St. Patrick was a, a nephew of the great St. Martin, which is one of the greatest that we've ever had in the line of man since Jesus Christ was St. Martin. His churches were all filled with the Holy Ghost. They all spoke in tongues, had signs and wonders and miracles, just all kinds of miracles taking place. He kept the Pentecostal faith in the midst of that church age that was wedding to Catholicism paganism and the Nicolaitans wedding together, making an organization and making the, the Nicolaitans, that we call Nicol means to conquer, conquer or overthrow the laity and take the Holy Spirit away from the congregation and just the priest is holy, just the man. See? And then they live any way they want to, I guess, and as long as you confess it to the priest. Amen. Then they found last night that as they set them up, that Constantine set up the first bishop and put it, give this Buildings to him as we give you the dates and everything that you've got down. And then had the great solace feast there, which was the 21st day of December, the shortest day in the year, and brought in then this heresy, being that he was a Sunday. See, the, the day of the sun, birthday, they brought the birth of Jesus Christ from April up to December the 25th. December 25th, through that five days is when the Romans had their big celebrations, the circus and so forth. And that's when they had this great pagan feast and they put this man as a god himself up there dressed him up and everything and they had their god right with him and uh, that's when the post-millennium people come in, into existence right there because they thought the church was in the millennium right there see because his rich had need of nothing state and church all together millennium is on is still a catholic teaching to this day see now the millennium on well we know that that's wrong the millennium, the second coming of Christ brings the millennium. Amen. That's right. The earth is groaning, crying for that day of sweet release when our Lord shall come back to earth again. Now, this great saint here was Columbo. He was a great man of God. Now, I've got his history kind of written down here. First, the fourth church age, Thyatira. It means to be laxed, loose, or hazy. See? It was just a illegitimate time. From 606 to 1500, the star was Columbia from Ireland and Scotland, which was a nephew to St. Um, Martin, and lived about 60 years after St. Patrick. And uh, so his ministry began about 60 years after St. Patrick. His, um, he never did accept the Roman doctrine. He was a great man of faith. He rejected the Roman teaching, never did go to Rome, and rejected it altogether. And I couldn't see where they ever canonized him like they did St. Martin and him. They didn't canonize him and Irenaeus because they were still in that church that had signs and wonders of Pentecost.
but believed he never took the Roman teaching on their teachings. He took the Bible for the teaching. After his godly mother, the sister of St. Uh, Martin, and never took the Roman teachings at any time. He taught that signs of Mark 16 should follow every believer. <laughs> Amen. I, that's the kind of guy. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yes, sir. He, um, he heard God's audible voice calling. That's another good sign. To him. Then nothing could stop him after that. He was gone. <laughs> <laughs> All right. He was on the road when he heard the audible voice of God. All right. Um, one miracle. I got several down here, but we just take this one. One miracle was that when he had went to a certain city that the Lord had sent him to, and the city didn't want to receive him. So they went out there and tried to tuck the musicians and so forth and close the gates and tried to drown him out by playing the musicians. And he began to preach and drowned out the musicians. And the gates come open. He went on in and preached anyhow. He got the whole bunch converted. Amen. Here's another little one I'd like to kind of speak about. He went into a city. Uh, they had their cities walled in those days, of course. So he went to the city and they turned him out. He's going away. And the chief's boy fell violently sick. And they sent down the road after the good saint. He'd come back and laid himself across the dying boy. And he'd come to life. His church was filled with the Holy Ghost. He would have nothing less. For every member of his church must be filled with the Holy Ghost. And he protested and highly hated the hierarchy of Rome. I believe he was the star of the age. What was he doing? With speaking in tongues, the baptism in the name of the Lord Jesus, carrying out the very things that they started. If the God is infinite, and that's the way he set up his church at the beginning, it has to remain the same, and it has, even in the minority, all the way down, all we're squeezed out here, comes back again through Luther. Now, we want to start now and see if we can um, start to get some of these verses off. Now, we are begin the 18th verse. Unto the angel of the church of Thyatira write. Did you notice these these addresses, these messages are addressed to the angel or the minister bearing the light of that church age. Amen. See? Now, last night we found out in the closing of this other church age of, of Pergamos that the angel of the church in the overcoming of this church age would receive a stone. And in this stone, now we've tucked that stone and symbolized it means a rock. What is it? The angel would be one like Peter called stone. Find out that your name has a bearing on your life. Now, I can't go too much of that because the devil has a false numerology. We know that. Starts people feeling and so forth like that which runs into spiritualism. And spiritualism is of the devil. We know that. And that's why you have to watch like uh, they recently have called Jesus a Beelzebub, a devil, because the see, he could discern the thoughts of their mind. See, but he was the Word of God. In Hebrews 4 said the Word of God sharper than a two-edged sword, even discerner of the thoughts of the intents of the heart, the mind. Amen. See? So he was the Word. He's the living Word. And the living Word comes into us, and then it does the same effect on us. See? Same, because it's the same Word. It's the same thing among us. And that's why sometimes those who are not in that bracket speak with tongues and other than interpret. What is it? The Word made flesh again among us. And then we notice then that this angel was received, the angel of the church age that received the stone. It was a white stone, mean not his own righteousness, but God's own righteousness. And in this stone was a name, a name. That no one know but the one who received it himself. He knew it, but no one else could know it but him. So you hear these guys flattering you, telling them they're John, they're Paul, they're Mary, they're this, that, or the other. Don't you believe it? Because if it was, he'd never say nothing about it. Amen. That's right. He has to keep it to himself. Amen. He know no one know but he himself, but he know because every... Perfect overcomer receives a new name. 
And that, that, that way. Did you notice? Abraham was called Abram. But when God went to use him, he changed his name to Abraham. S-A-R-R was Sarah. But when God was going to use her, he changed her name to S-A-R-R-A-H, Sarah, princes. Do you know what Jacob? Jacob was supplanter. Esau means red. Harry and red, red-headed and red all over is Esau. Now, and Jacob was supplanter. And supplanter is a deceiver. And Esau say is his name called Jacob, supplanter? But... When he wrestled with the Lord all night long and overcome and was blessed, God changed his name. Amen. Jacob, Israel, a prince with God. Paul was called Saul until he met the Holy Spirit in the form of a light that shined down upon him. His name was changed from Saul to Paul. Simon, when he met Jesus, he changed his name to Peter. Is that right? And when Jesus overcome, his name was changed. And he would reveal that name. He that would be with him, overcome, as he has, he received the new name, and I'll reveal my new name to him. Amen. See? And ever overcomer, I mean amongst such as that, them leaders and so forth. Now, all the children of Israel didn't get their name changed, of course. That's right. But those high leaders, when they... Overcome, they had received a new name. See how dovetails in? Just perfectly. And um, now we find out that he also got hidden manna. Now, hidden manna is typed to the shoe bread. The shoe bread was for priests alone. That is right. Shoe bread was just for the priest. And they, it was a special thing made for the priest. That is, the leaders. And this man overcome, the whole congregation got manna, but he got a hidden special manna or special revelation oh, of who Jesus was and what about him, all about him. See, he got that revelation if he had overcome to the angel, hold fast, or either he had overcome addressed to the angel of the church. Amen. See, now... We find then tonight, we start out to the angel of the church of Thyatira, write these things, saith the Son of God, who has eyes like flames of fire, and his feet like fine brass. Now, when we seen him in the first Ephesus age, or in the first beginning of Revelations, we seen him in his sevenfold glorified personage, hair. We find that John found him over in the Lord's day. When he comes now, he is a priest. When he was here on earth, he was a prophet, God's prophet. Now he took his own blood and went before the Father, which makes him a priest. When he comes back, he'll be a king. Prophet, priest, and king. He was God's prophet. He was an eagle. He was God's priest. He was a lamb. When he comes back, he'll be the lion, Amen. the king, the Amen. tribe of Amen. Judah, Amen. the reign. Amen. But between his priestly operation, when the sanctuary is left, then we find him standing there. And John said he was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. Not the seventh day, not Sunday. That's all mistaken. We found that out. Searching through the Scripture, it was the Lord's day. Amen. This is the day of man. The coming of the Lord will be his day. Amen. And we find him in the Lord's day. And when he's seen the Lord, he had on a snow white hair. And we know that that represents a judge. Another thing, he was not priest then because the priest is tied around the middle. means service, but he was tied around the paths up here. Which meant that he was a judge. Amen. Amen. And we see him walking in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. And now we tuck back to the ancient of days being white at the white throne judgment. When Daniel saw him come to the Ancient of Days, whose hair was as white as snow. Now, white, the old English judges down through the years used to be, when they went into the judgment seat, they'd put on a big white wig, snow white wig, because they were judges. And John saw him in the Lord's day when he was a judge. Amen. Amen. Now, we find out that he had eyes like flames of fire. 
that eyes then, like flames of fire, once them eyes was dim with human tears, it could stand and weep over a man dying and knowing in the next five minutes he's going to live again. But just human sympathy. But behind that was such power you could look right through a man's life and tell him who he was and all about it. Amen. Because it was coming now in this reflection as fire. Eyes can look to and fro through the earth and see everything that's going on. Where will you stand in the day of judgment? Your sins will be naked before him. And you notice he had out of his mouth a, a sharp two-edged sword, which we found was the word. We've seen his feet was fine brass and so forth, which meant his foundation. He tread the wine press of the wrath of Almighty God and tramped down and tucked sin upon him and waited out and pleased God. Amen. That's right. Amen. And his foundation is our foundation. On Christ the solid rock I stand, said Eddie Pruitt, all other grounds is sinking sands. That's right. Oh, now we find here, each time when he meets a church age, he addresses him as one of his deity names. Now we find out back there, the first in all revelations is the deity, the supreme deity of Jesus Christ. I am he that was, which is, and shall come. I am the first and the last, the almighty God. See, the first revelation. John turned to look what was taught to him. The first thing he addressed him at, any king, when he's addressed, he, he, he tells who he is. Anybody. I am so-and-so and I speak to you. You don't know me. I'm William Branham. I'm John Doe, whoever it is. He said, I am the first and the last. Amen. He that was alive is dead and alive Amen. forevermore. Oh, my. The deity. Here we see him in his sevenfold personage of his glorified state. And each church age, he, uh, he approaches them in a different one of those deities, a different one of those uh, glorified states. Now, tonight, he comes with a flaming fire. He's looking down into Laodicea, uh, down into uh, uh, Thyatira. This is the age that the church is married into Catholicism and paganism or Nicolaitanism and paganism wedded together and formed and gave birth to the first church. Organized church. And God said that the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which was in the Ephesians, over in the church of Pergus, became a doctrine. Amen. And said it was a doctrine of Balaam. Amen. And Balaam was the one who taught Israel to go over there, commit fornications. Uh, they committed fornications with Moab, which was a lukewarm church member, or the common church. The great organization. And we find out that God said that Nicolaitan doctrine, which is to take, uh, put all the power up in a church and set it aside and make it an organization. He said, you hate it and I hate it too. He just keeps saying, hate it, hate it, hate it. And it's coming to full swing here. See how the church squeezed out? Right up here to just a little bitty thing. And that's the church we're on now. Now, in this day... That this revelation came, or it was to this church, it was a day that Rome had built up on the great uh, stones of their place of hay and straw. But he's addressed in this church that he still remains the flaming fires that looks Amen. down through the time, and his foundation is not hay stubble, but it's a solid, tried brass in the fiery furnace. Amen. The foundation is sure. I love that. We know where we're standing. All right. I know thy works and thy charity and thy service and faith and thy patience and thy works and the last, last to be more than the first. All right. The church seems to have almost completely been cut off, just a little dwindle, and it got away from the great spiritual meetings and we're kind of relying upon works. God don't want us to rely upon works. That's a, f a sign of organism. Amen. We take Miss Jones over uh, some uh, wood, and we'll take uh, so-and-so the children over some clothes, and that's all right. But don't you depend on that. Don't you do that, brother. That, uh, that's a good deed. A good, decent citizen will do that. Amen. But what it takes to be a Christian is a born-again experience. Amen. The baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. All right, Dwayne Law. They was resorted to works. Instead of love and faith, 
uh, uh, getting the more and more all the time as it went on. All right, I know your works, I know your faith, I know your patience and so forth. But now, we're going to take the 20th verse. Listen to this. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou suffers that woman, Jezebel, which calls herself a prophetess, to teach and subdue my servants and commit fornications to eat things uh, sacrificed unto idols. Now, woman. What did we find out woman represented last night? Church. Now, now we find out here they were called Nicolaitans, doctrine of Balaam, and now it's become to a Jezebel. Now, Jezebel, if you'll notice, this is a great history. Now, if you want to write it down, start in 1 Kings about the uh, 1 Kings about 16. Jezebel was not a daughter of Abraham. Neither was this group over here, the pagan Rome. The Nicolaitans was a cold, formal bunch of Christians that had separated themselves from the real Christians, seemingly not having the faith. And they wanted to make the church like a lodge, the same as they got today. Like a lodge, no spirit in it all. Days of miracles has passed. All that was for another age. We got a brotherhood, a good mason, odd fellow, or anything like that produces that, and that's all right. But that will never take the place of a new birth in Jesus Christ. Amen. Salvation to the soul. It's true. All right, this Jezebel. Now, she was a daughter of Abraham. That's true. A princess of an idolater. At that time when the royal family, her royal family, was famed by cruel, savage loyalty to Balaam. Her father was a priest of the idol of A-S-T-A-R-T-E. I don't know how you pronounce it. I just picked it up in the history. Ahab used this strategy like Constantine, this great powerful nation late next to Israel. So therefore, what did Constantine do last night? He wasn't converted. Amen. He was a politician. What was he trying to do? He tucked the Christians when they told him they'd pray. And now that remember, he's we're talking now of the Nicolaitan. And he said if they would pray and he'd win this battle then he would, uh, he'd be a Christian. He had a dream, painted his shield white that night of the cross where the Knights of Columbus was born, right at that time. Now, that's where they take their stand. But he never did anything like a Christian. On one of the Nicolaitan churches called St. Sophie, he put a cross. As I said last night, that's the only thing he ever done is sounded anything like he was for the church. As far as I could ever glean out any of the pages of history, and many other scholars say the same thing. We know nothing about his conversion. Now, but what did he go into? The thing he wanted to do, he's seen the most of Rome now. Now look at this. Watch this strategy. And watch how the Bible confirms it. God, hundreds and hundreds of years before taking place. And Constantine used the same strategy God said here that Ahab used. Now Constantine seen a great part of his people were these Nicolaitans, Christians. Some of them was called heretics. That's the Pentecostals. They were heretics, the holy rollers, and what more. That's where your real signs and wonders laid. But the church natural then was coming on up to the organization. What did he do? Constantine played a smart part. He goes over there and gets his pagan friends and gets his Christian friends and unites the churches together. Amen. Sets up a, a, a paganism into Christianity. Christianity and paganism married in the Pergus church. Now, what did he say over here to this tonight? The same thing that Ahab did. Ahab, to strengthen his kingdom, married Jezebel, this idolatrous. To strengthen his kingdom. To get more strength into Israel. And that's what the churches is trying to do. You see where they're trying to make a Bible? Amen. Have it out next year in 62? That it's a Bible that will please the Jews, it will please the Catholics, and please the Protestants. Oh, brother. Amen. I got the newspaper clipping. I haven't got it with me tonight. You heard me read the other night. Oh. Yes, amen. There you are. See? Oh, them things to try to increase. They take God's holy things and scatter them anyway. 
to increase and make a lot of numbers. Amen. That's what the church done. Amen. It accepted people into it on the basis of shaking hands and got renegades and everything else. Amen. Unregenerated people, but into the true body of Christ, which is not an organization, but the mystical, mythical body of Christ. You can only come in there in one way, and that's through the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Right. And the same signs that struck them apostles strikes the church. Yeah, That's amen. exactly right. Now, we don't have to compromise and say, well, we'll go join with the assemblies. We'll go join with the oneness. We'll go join with this or the Baptist or Methodist. Let's join with Christ. Amen. Amen. Stay free from these things. Because each one of those organizations are all right. But they... They get their doctrines and their things and you have to go see if the general overseer lets you come in that country and have a meeting. If you don't teach just exactly like they do, how shall? <coughs> you can't stay with the Bible. Amen. God can't do it. He hates it. Amen. Amen. Any other born-again Christian would too. Amen. Many of those people out there are absolutely wants to do, wants to serve, and wants to ship, but you can't do it. To kick you out. Well, let them kick you out. Amen. You won't get the Holy Ghost anyhow. Amen. That's exactly right. Amen. But, you see, they, they want to get that, that dogma. They want to get you where you got a lot of money. The Baptists had a slogan in 44, a million more in 44. What did they get? It's like the great evangelist Billy Graham said when he was in Louisville. I'll go into a city. said, St. Paul will go into a city. He'll make one convert. Come back next year. He's, he's got 30. Off of that one. Great, 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 great grandchildren from that one conversion. He said, I'll go into the city, call 30,000 up. I'll go back next year and can't find 30. Amen. And what he said, he made a good statement, but still I don't believe that our precious brother was right. He said, you lazy preachers. He said, I'll give you their names and address. You set your feet up on the desk and write him a letter instead of going talking to him. I, I kind of admired him for that. I like a man to be what he is, not a hypocrite. Yeah. Stand around and be what you are. And I like that. But I'd like to say, Billy, who was up there to take that convert that Paul had? Amen. Amen. What it was, Billy, if you just quit letting him go back there and shake hands and wake up and say, well, yes, I accept Jesus as my personal Savior, and let him stay there until he dies and rocks Amen. and is born to give the Holy Ghost. Amen. He'll make new converts, brother. He's a blooming with fire. You can't put him out. Uh, he's like a house on fire in a high wind. <laughs> you just can't do it. Oh, he's spreading everywhere, brother. A real convert of Christ. He can't sit still. He's just, he's on the move. Oh, I'm so glad. Oh, my. Oh, the old-fashioned baptism of the Holy Ghost that sets your soul afire. Amen. Oh, can't stand still. Amen. <laughs> Wind fanning, you know, rushing uh -huh. mighty wind. Just yes, keep sir. going. Yes, sir. Right. Hallelujah. I just keep feeding it the wood and keep going. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. Nobody had to take Paul's convert. Paul take him deep enough in Christ till he got he dead to himself and alive in Christ, and he done the rest of it. <laughs> right. That's what it is. Baptist brethren are fine, but a million more, what good does it do? You got a million more names. We'll just sit down and make up some of you and put them on there. That's all right. But, brother, what we want is names on the Lamb's book of life. Slaying from the foundation of the world. Washed in the blood. Filled with the Holy Ghost. Signs and wonders following you. Amen. Search the histories. I wish you all get the Nicene councils. Read those things to see how those martyrs help that flame of Pentecost. I'll tell you now, brother, you Baptist, Methodist, and whatever you are, the true genuine light is not the Pentecostal organization now, but the true genuine light is a Pentecostal experience. Amen. Down, I've been days and days now, those histories, dig them into all I can find everywhere, and it's that flame of Pentecost that stayed alive from Pentecost down to this time. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Amen. Been pushed out. Some of them say, well, the great Catholic Church has stood the waves. Why, it proves that she's the real church. Why, it's no strange thing to me with the state and everything else behind her. She could exist. But what's a, tr what's a strange oh, thing? Yeah. That little bunch is pulled off. That little minority <laughs> kicked out, <laughs> thrown in jail, sawed to pieces. How did they ever exist? Amen. Because the spirit of the living God <laughs> is in their being. And all the demons oh. of hell cannot prevail against it. Sir. Upon this rock I'll build my yes, church sir. in the gates of hell. Amen. 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 There's the real thing. Yes, sir. Amen. 
That's why I give the Holy Ghost to these Methodist preachers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here. See, it makes them rise up. Yes, sir. Amen. Just something to you. <laughs> It'll never fail. No, Ahab, that hypocrite. See, he goes over and says, Now, if I could just consolidate, now I'd get this big nation, and if I marry that old boy's daughter down there, well, that we, we'll be friends. What was he doing? Selling his very birthrights. Yeah, yeah. Now, when this Protestant church does go back and unite with the Catholic church, it'll do the same thing it did back on earth. Amen. Ahab lived in the day that it's been three times. He was in the midnight experience of the journey of Israel. And here it comes to the midnight again, and we come to the midnight again here. Three generations before this, one in here, in here, and in here. Now, if you notice... Ahab married Jezebel to strengthen his people. That's exactly what Constantine did. He set up a great big church and took the altar and made a big marble, dressed this man up, Pope, set him up on there. He was a living God. He could talk to him and, and tell her about their sins. And that just pleased that old lukewarm church. And away they went. Sure. That's it. Well, but that didn't please that man who was born again. When they take that and then bring in pagan ceremonies or saying the prayers, what did they do? They taken down Jude River and put up Peter. They took down Venus and put up Mary. And it brought it brought paganism into the Christian uh, ranks. And when Ahab married Jezebel, he did the very same thing else. He brought idolatry into Israel. Amen. Amen. And what did Jezebel do? She killed every prophet she could get her hands on. Amen. Is that right? Amen. So did the popes. Amen. Every true Christian get their hands on, they killed them. But there was a star of that age. Amen. Oh, Elijah. Amen. <laughs> oh, yes, sir. Hallelujah. He wasn't scared to tell him about it. Amen. <laughs> yes, Glory. sir. Hallelujah. He was God's star of that age. Amen. Amen. Got down to one time and said, Lord, I'm the only one left. God said, now, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, Lance. <laughs> I got 700 hit out around in the other sea. You don't know where they're at. They're out there in the Pharisees, Sadducees, Baptists, Methodists, and Presbyterians. But I, I'll get them out there. You just wait. See? I've got them out there. That's, uh, they're, they're, they're mine. They're not bowed to need to bail them yet. But old Elijah was the voice of God in that day. He sure was a very type of the voice of God at the first coming of Christ. It'll be the type of the voice in the second coming of Christ again, Amen. according to the Scriptures. Now, we find out that this little Jezebel, when she got over there, she was really going to cut down all of the uh, altars of God and put up her own altars. And she had Israelites bowing before an idol. That's exactly what Constantine did when he formed the Catholic Church. He brought paganism over into the, the Christian church and had Christians bow into idols. Amen. Amen. Exactly. The dark age again. Dark age of Israel. Dark age of, of the church. Bow into idols. And Elijah was a star in his day. And caused all Israel to worship Balaam. And so did the Catholic Church at Thyatira. Now, I want you to notice another thing striking here. I was getting my history here. Jesus said that she was called herself a prophetess. That woman Jezebel who calls herself, calls herself a prophetess. Now, you see, the Catholic Church don't permit their people to read the Bible because they say that the priest is the only one that can divinely divine that word. Well, that's true interpretation of a prophet. A prophet has the divine interpretation of God's word. Amen. Amen. That's exactly right. How a person can call one somebody a prophet and then say they have the wrong revelation. It's just as much sense as eternal sonship again, you see. It's, it's the... A prophet means the correct diviner. Amen. The one that the word of the Lord came to. The revelation came to it. The word prophet means a diviner of the divine word. Amen. Jesus said, if there be one among you spiritual prophet, our Lord will speak to him. And if what he says comes to pass, then hear him. I'm with him. If it doesn't come to pass, then don't hear him. 
That's all. It was, the, it was the divine word of God. And the word of the Lord came to the prophets. Now, they said that this church then was a prophet. Now, remember, it's changed from this Nicolaitan now. It's changed over to a her. Amen. Amen. You see it? A Jezebel. Now, last night it was a doctrine of Balaam. See? Amen. Doctrine of the Nicolaitans and doctrine of Balaam. Now, Balaam was the one who made it hoarded them with Israel. And what did the, uh, the, uh, the do- Nicolaitans do? Made the organization. So put them both together and he got a her. Church. Amen. Amen. Sure. Revelation 17, the great whore that sets upon uh, many waters. Amen. Woman, prostitute. What is she? How is she a prostitute? She's committing fornication, spiritual fornication, misinterpreting the word to the people. Amen. Get away from that fanaticism. Amen. That's real fanaticism. Amen. Right. Now, see, she calls herself a prophetess. We're the one, we're the council. We're the lady of sin council again, the council of man. And we have decided this and this and thus. So you listen to us. But Jesus, that, that little priest up here uh, t- uh, interviewed me about Elizabeth Frazier, or that Frazier girl, said, uh, uh, the, uh, the cardinal wants to know if you are the bishop. If uh, you baptize this Frazier girl, said she's becoming a Catholic. I said, yeah, I understand that. Said, uh, did you baptize her? I said, yes, sir. Said, how did you baptize her? I said, in Christian baptism. Mm. He said, well, what do you mean by that? I said, Christian baptism, the way the Bible says, there's only one way to baptize in Christian baptism. Amen. Every person in the Bible was immersed under the water in the name of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> he wrote down, started writing down like that, and said, you know the Catholic Church used to do that? I said, when? I said, I have all the ancient history here that I could ever get a hold of from London and everywhere else so I can study when this hour will soon approach, when something's Amen. going to happen. I said, I, I want to know where. I, he said, oh, he said, in the Bible. I said, you say that. He said, Jesus organized the Catholic Church. I said, was Peter the first pope? He said, most certainly. I said, I thought the church was infallible and didn't change and all the masses are said in Latin so that it wouldn't change. He said, that's true. I said, well, you sure have done some changing <laughs> since that time. I said, if that Bible is a Catholic book, then I'm an old-fashioned Catholic. Amen. That's right. I said, I'm an old-fashioned Catholic then. I said, it certainly, he said, well, now you see, the Bible is just the history of the Catholic Church. He said, God is in his church. I said, God is in his word. Amen. <laughs> Let my word be true and every other man's word a lie. Amen. And here on this book of Revelations is the only book, let me repeat it, that Jesus put his endorsement upon. And the first thing he did was reveal his deity. And he completely does it. And said, anybody that'll take anything out of it or add anything to it, the same will be taken as part out of the book of life. Yes, amen. Blessed is he that readeth or he that heareth, and cursed is he that'll add one thing to it or take anything away from it. Amen. There you are, so you see the danger part. So don't ever add nothing to that. Just leave it the way it is and just keep on going. The Spirit will reveal it to you if you'll just be humble. Hallelujah. Yes, see? Praise That's the Lord. right. Glory. Now, Praise so it's not complicated. God, Jesus thanked the Father for saying, I thank thee, Father, that thou hast hid these things from the eyes of the rabbis and the bishops and the cardinals and the general overseers and, and to reveal it to babes such as to learn. See, Amen. that's what you want. It's a revelation of God that can only come, as he said there, who does man say I am? He said, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. He said, Simon, you never learned that in a seminary. <laughs> Nobody ever told you that. Amen. That come as a revelation from heaven. And upon this rock, I'll build my church and the gates of hell can't prevail against it. Exactly the revelation that Abel had in the beginning. It's the revelation was then. It's still the revelation. And it'll always be the revelation. That's right. Now, we find out here that she was a woman now. And a woman represents a church. Is that right? Christ is coming for a what? Right, a woman, chaste virgin. And the old woman here, she claimed herself to be of uh, the, the church of God. But what she was, she was decked in riches and pearl and everything and had a cup of the filthiness of her fornications that she made all the kings there drunk upon the wine of it. Is that right? Yeah. Now we find her here that she's called Jezebel. And Jezebel, the evil of Jezebel did as soon as she got a hope in amongst them Israelites, she put them to death and done everything she could and, and built up her own orders. Is that right? That's exactly what the Catholic Church did. Amen. That's exactly. But now, 
Let's read just a little farther. This is going to stunt you. Sometimes you get stunted, you lead a little more. Glory. Calls herself a prophetess. Now, if she says, I'm the only interpreter of the word, and teaches and seduces my servants to commit fornications, to eat um, the things sacrificed unto idols. That brother that asked about the serpent, about eating the fruit in the Garden of Eden, you see what it is, don't you? When he says, eat your, what it was spiritually, you see, in the... And I gave her space to repent for her fornication, uh, fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed. What kind of bed? Of worldliness? That's exactly what she is saying. And them that commit adultery with her into the great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. That's going into the great tribulation. And will kill her children with death. Whoa! For what? This old gal had some children. Amen. Now, Revelation 17, how many, all of you here last night, I suppose. Amen. All right. Revelation 17, this old prostitute Catholic church was a, called a whore, and she was a mother of harlots. Couldn't have been boys. They were churches. Now, where did the Lutheran church, where did all these come from? Where did every organization come from? Where's the beginning of it? Lady Osea. Nicolaitans finally formed into that. That's exactly the same thing again. Amen. You can't help it, brother. Oh, Elijah called out against the thing in his day. Amen. John called out against it in his Amen. day. Amen. Yes, sir. Don't you think you say to yourself, we have Abraham to our father. For I say, God's able these stones right short Amen. of Abraham. Amen. 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 Just can't be helped. Now, she had children. Did the real Jezebel have children? Yes, sir. Listen. I'll kill her children. What the Catholic Church, her children, is a Protestant denomination. Amen. See? It's exactly because they're doing the same thing. Baptized right into her by their freak baptism. Amen. Unscriptural baptism. Shaking hands for the Holy Ghost. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost instead of Jesus Christ. And just doing everything contrary to the Bible still. And they walk right into it. Her daughter was called Athelitha. A-T-H-A-L-I-A-H. She had her, she, Jezebel, had Aletha married to Jerome, the son of king of Judah, and soon the altars of Balaam was standing in Jerusalem. Uh, you don't have to go to history of that. That's Bible. See? Her daughter, Aletha, married a Jehoshaphat's son, which was Jerome, and her daughters did the same thing she did. Oh, my. Can't you see it? See how them organizations is done, brethren? They come right back to Luther and them just exactly and organize themselves together instead of letting the Holy Ghost and Pentecost did the same exactly Amen. thing. Amen. They couldn't just let the Holy Ghost go ahead and have its way and go ahead and have her light come, just examine it by the Word and go on. They couldn't let the Holy Spirit lead. They had to make an organization and cut off from everything else that would come along. Amen. Went right straight back and married into the thing again. Amen. Just exactly when we get to that age, you just watch what's waiting for you down the road here. See? Married right straight back in. Jesus said here, her, this Jezebel, she calls herself a prophetess, and I'll throw her in a bed of worldliness and kill her children also. Amen. And what kind with a death? What is, what kind of a death does her children be killed with? You see, they're dead now. Amen. Spiritually dead. Amen. They have no revelation. Amen. They know their organization. They know their catechism. They know their doctrine of the church. But when it comes to knowing God, some of them know more about it in a hot and hot. We know about Egyptian night. Amen. That's right. When it comes to really knowing the Holy Spirit, wondering, call, want to call the Spirit of God a soothsayer or a devil, a discerning spirits and things like that, and casting out evils. While he don't belong to our organization, that group, oh, brrr, see... They just don't know. Amen. Then tag it with a name of Jesus only or some kind of a holy roller or, or some kind of a thing like that. Just don't know. Amen. And the hour is close to hand. Amen. And that thing's going to be exposed. Amen. Exactly. God will do it as certain as I'm standing behind this pulpit. Both of you jerk his children out as certain as I'm standing right here. God in heaven knows that. Amen. <laughs> you believe me to be a prophet of the Lord or a servant of the Lord. You listen to me. Amen. She's close to the hand. Yes, sir. Her children will be killed with spiritual death. 
Look at him, cold and formal. Look at the look at our. We don't have to talk about Baptists and Presbyterians. We know they've been dead for years. Yeah. What well, when Luther had his revival, justification. If he would, if he'd have kept on this this Pentecostal great move, now would have been the Lutheran Church. Amen. The light would have come with sanctification. At Wesley followed in. He, Luther couldn't follow that. No, sir. They're already Lutherans. So then Wesley come and after Wesley died, then what happened? They organized that and made Wesley Methodists, primitive West, all, all kinds of Methodists. See? And when had a great revival. But when they throw it in the organization, what happened when Pentecost come along speaking in tongues and bring the restoration of the gifts? They couldn't move. Amen. Call them devils. Now what's the Pentecost done? The same thing they did. Yeah. Amen. And where they at? Just as dead as a doornail. Yeah. Yes, sir. That's exact. I'll throw her children in a bed of in a bed of death and kill them. Let me read that story. you see here. I believe it was um, the 22nd verse. And I will cast her into a bed, and then that commit adultery with her unto the great tribulation. The uh, uh, great tribulation. That's what's going through. Now, remember, let me stop here just a minute. That great tribulation is that, that which you're going to throw in there is those people that are the sleeping virgin. They didn't have oil in their lamps, yet they belonged to an organization, good people, went to church and everything, but they come for oil, but too late then. See, Amen. throw her into great tribulation. She'll go in that. The Catholic Church goes in. All of her children goes in with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. Not, not the children that's in there, but the church itself. That's her children's the organization, not the people that's in there, like poor Catholics, Baptists, Presbyterians, or Pentecostals. I feel sorry for them. Just... Well, I, are you a Christian? Well, I'm Presbyterian. <laughs> That's no more to do with it than, than say a hog with a side saddle on was a racehorse. So what in the world could you do about that? Why, nothing at all. Amen. I didn't mean that joke. That's, this is no, not no place Amen. for jokes. This is, this no. is the gospel. See? Amen. I just wanted to give an illustration. See, but that, that's right. Yeah. See, they ain't got no, no more to do with it. And nothing. I'm Pentecostal. That don't have no more to do with it. Nothing. You could belong to 40, 11 other organizations. But are you a born again child of God? Really do you love everybody with all your heart, with your soul? And you love God in your daily, no matter what anyone does to you. You wrap him hmm, like a bus. All It shows the Holy Spirit's departed, if you ever did have it. But, Let's she pin those eat. and I will kill her children with death. Her children, Jezebel's. Now what did Jezebel do? Married her daughter into the other rank of Judah over there. Or oh, into Judah. Now what's the spiritual application? Maybe I can draw it out. Here. Watch this real close now. Here is Jezebel in Israel. But here's Judah, a different type. Over here, on another. This is Jehoshaphat over here. All right. Now, this here was Ahab. Now, here's Jezebel right in here. Now, she comes in here and calls all of Israel to go to idolatry. That's exactly what Catholic Church did back in her days when Constantine uh, united the Nicolaitans, the cold formals up in here, into the, uh, to the, the church and to paganism and made a pagan form of Christianity. I don't want to hurt your feelings, Catholic people. But I'm responsible for God. That's Amen. all the Catholic church is. is a pagan form of Christianity. Superstitions and idols and everything else. It's exactly Amen. just a pagan form. Uh, that's true. If I'm dying in this minute, that's the truth. Amen. And the Amen. Protestants write in the same thing. It's in another category. Amen. Now watch what Jezebel done. Then, you see, the, the devil, she is so shredded, she took her <laughs> daughter. She had a daughter born here. And this daughter goes over here to this great holy man and takes and marries his son and brings the same thing over in here from Jehoshaphat, over in this part. Now, the real... Nicolaitans, the Nicolaitans, the cold farmers that wanted that organization, they married into it here. And now notice the same thing they cut Jezebel here, the Catholic Church. And down here, she takes her daughter, her organizations, and marries it right in June down there and does the same thing to them. Kill her children with death, spiritual death. 
organize themselves to death, and the first thing you know, all the spirits gone. Tell me, let me just ask you one thing, any historian here, which I know there's five or six of you sitting here. I want you to come and produce me one scripture or, or, or one text of, of history that any of them churches that ever fell and went back into the organization ever rose again with a revival. <laughs> Tell me when they organized themselves, did they ever have a revival after they organized? No, sir. The Spirit left them. Amen. Uh, I'm including Pentecost. Amen. When the Pentecostal blessings fell in you all spoken tongues, you old timers. Having them great Pentecostal blessings and things fell. After a while, you had what you call the general council. Organism's all right, but not organization. First thing you know, you couldn't stand it. You had to go right back and become a child of the Satan and organize yourself. And then another light come on in the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> then they got all stuck up and said, Bless God, if you ain't got Jesus' name, you're going to hell. If we got it and you ain't got it. What did you do? Just died right there in the tracks, made an organization out of it. See? Instead of letting the light just flow on through the church, it automatically take its place. But you organize yourself. What is it? Child of Jezebel. Amen. And they all died together. Now I want to ask you something. Has the assemblies of God or the oneness or, or any of the rest of them ever rose in a big united revival? Not at all. This last revival just passed by that the Holy Spirit come down on a river... Many of you sitting here right now in 1933, and this great healing service is to take place that would sweep the world, and it never come through any different organization at all. Amen. God went outside the rims and raised up a heathen almost to start that revival. Amen. And look what it's done. See? Them organizations, as soon as you organize, they're dead. Amen. He said, I'll kill her children with death. Oh, my I know you. Please don't feel bad at me. But I, if I know this and don't tell it, I'm a low-down hypocrite, and God will hold me responsible for it. Amen. I will be like Paul, a shun not to Amen. declare the whole counsel of God. Amen. That's right. Amen. All right. All right. Now, and they built altars in Jerusalem. Now I want to see. And when Jezebel married Ahab, she brought images for Israel to bow down to. So did the Nicolaitan doctor, marrying into pagan, took down Jupiter, put up Peter and Venus to marry. And as the Bible said, she caused all Israel to sin. So has the Catholic Church caused all the daughters to marry into an organization and the whole thing sin. Amen. Amen. Like Jezebel to her daughter. All right. <clears throat> And in doing this, when the hierarchy was set up and Pope Boniface the Boniface the the third taking his seat and they had a, a God on a throne, they had no more use for Holy Ghost baptism in the church. That's right, they got their creeds and formals and go on. And when the organization accepted the same dogma, they stamped out the freedom of the Holy Ghost Amen. to the church. Amen. Baptist, Presbyterian, Methodist, and so forth. They certainly did. And gradually, we see them withering and dying like Jesus said of the vine. Now, all the Holy Ghost and signs and wonders was placed back in a day past. And they have gotten rich like she did. So she caused all the whole world to sin because she has gone to every nation, her and her daughters. Amen. That's right. I watch him call her in another church age now. Watch him call for her. Watch him plead down here at the end and take out his remnant. Amen. The elect sake, just a few, that no flesh would be saved if other not. As it is written in Revelation 13, 6, You'd like to get to that just a minute? He said he, at this woman, caused all to receive a mark, this beast did, caused all to receive a mark, both poor, great, whoever there was, a mark of the beast, which was the Roman Catholic Church. Either that, or they made an image, Revelation 13, 14, they made an image unto the beast. You, you, I guess you're all reading that. If you have them, well, we'll turn right back and read Revelation 13, 40. And he deceived them that dwell upon the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. That's this confederation of church. And to do in the sight of the beast, uh, saying unto them that dwell upon the earth that they should make an image unto the beast which had the deadly wound 
paganism and was by the sword and did live through papistry, pagan Rome to papal Rome. See, make an image show. What would it be? Just what they're doing right now. Just exactly. Moving up in this confederation of churches. All the churches belong to this organization. All going into one group. Now they're getting a Bible. And Pope John has invited them all back. The Archbishop of Canterbury. All going around. First thing you know, the whole thing comes right back to Mammy. Amen. Because they're harlots to begin with. <laughs> See? They say we'll all join together in one big cause to fight communism. And don't know that God raised up communism. Amen. I can prove that with this Bible. And he put their minds up to avenge the saints of the blood that they had shed upon the earth. God organized communism just the same as he did King Nebuchadnezzar to, to chastise Israel. He raised up communism and someday she'll blow Rome come off the map. God said so. That's right. I'm against communism. It's anti-God. Sure it is. But don't you pay so much attention to that iron curtain, but watch that purple curtain. Read the box book of martyrs and you'll see this. That line. <clears throat> now let's see where we... And you see here now that she called uh, all rich poor uh, to receive a mark. But there's one class that she could not touch. You know that? Revelation 13, 8. Listen to this. Let me read this. Now I stood up on the sands... Let us see and saw a beast rise up out of the seas, having seven heads and ten horns. Upon the horns, crowns, and upon the heads, the name of blasphemy. That's the seven hills we took it all last night, you know. And the beast which thou sawest is like to a leopard, feet like, a, like the bear, and his mouth, the mouth of a lion, and the dragon, which was the red devil that stood before the woman to devour her child, which is Rome, we all know. And gave him power and his seat and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as it was wounded to death. Paganism. See? And his deadly wound was healed. Papal took its place. Joined in with Christianity with the Nicolaitans. And all the world wondered at the beast. Catholicism is swept into every nation under the heavens. That's right. As Daniel said about the iron going into the clay and so forth. And I'll give you a little thing on that, that iron and clay. Did you notice I have ever quoted to you? And that last great conference they had up here where Khrushchev took off his shoe and beat the table with it? There was five eastern nations gathered there. There were five western nations. Khrushchev headed the eastern nations. Eisenhower headed the western nations. That's the two main leaders, the two big toes. Khrushchev and Russia means clay. Eisenhower in, Amer in English means iron. We're at the end. And they worship the dragon, which gave the power to the beast. And that's our next message here at the tabernacle, you understand. And they worship the beast, saying, Who is likened to the beast, and who is able to make war with him? In other words, look here. Eisenhower has got a big name here in this United States, but in Rome he ain't nothing. Russia he's nothing. Khrushchev's big in Russia, but in the United States he's nothing. But there's one man that's big everywhere. Amen. That's that pope. That's right. Let's organize ourselves together and come together. And there was given unto him a mouth to speak great things, blasphemy. Power was given unto him to continue in 42 months. And he opened his mouth and blasphemed God, t teaching for doctrine and the commandments of man. Heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure, having the form of God that's denying the power thereof. And blaspheme his name, took Father, Son, Holy Ghost, and said of the Lord Jesus Christ. See? And his tabernacle, and them that dwelled in, the, in, in heaven... And it was given to him to make war against the saints. There comes the persecution rising. And to overcome them. And power was given to him over all kindreds, tongues, and nations. And all them that dwell upon the earth. Earth shall worship him whose names were not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the <clears throat> foundation of the world. Foundation of the world. Our names, as they ever was on the book, was put on back there. Jesus said, No man can come to me except my Father draws him first. And all that the Father hath given me will come to me. My sheep hear my voice. This is the food, see. And a stranger, you can say, Well, I just joined the church. I'm as good as you. That ain't sheep food. Here's sheep food. <laughs> Setting together in heavenly places in Christ. <laughs> Oh, he's so wonderful, isn't he? Amen. 
All right. Now, let's finish up right quick because it's, it's past time now. All right. <clears throat> but I say, let's see now, I've got the 23rd verse. And I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he which searches the reins and hearts, and I will give unto every one of you according to your works. But unto you, I say, and to the rest in Thyatira, as many as has not this doctrine, what kind of doctrine was it? Organization. Bishops and archbishops and popes, see, has not this doctrine. Now, the Bible, we found out last night, Israel coming through Moab, they was not a nation. They dwelt upon the face of the earth, and they was a people free. Is that right? Yes, Wonders about tents and so forth. The Pentecostal groups is the same way. The true Pentecost, wandering about place to place. See? All right. It has not this doctrine of organizing herself and making a great organization out of it, which has not this, and which have not known the depths of Satan. Now, remember, we found out where Satan's seat was. Last night we took him plumb back to the beginning. Where was his seat in the beginning? Babylon. And Babylon, when the, um, the hierarchy, the king priest of Babylon was being pursued by the conquering Chaldeans, he come to Pergus and made his seat. Satan shifted his seat from the land of Shinar up to Pergos. We just read that right from the histories last night. And now, there he began, and there formed the Catholic Church, which is still his mother, Babylon. All right, the seat of Satan. And... The seed of Satan, as they speak, I will put no more burden upon you. There won't be no more burden. It's what you've already got, this little minority that's in there. See, that's all squeezed out in this dark age. Now, it's pretty 1,500 years he went through that. But that which you have already, hold fast till I come. In other words, you've got the Pentecostal blessing still in your hearts. Hold that till I come to give you relief this next age. It's just coming up in the next time. He that overcometh, and keepeth my words unto the end, to him I will give the power over the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and as a vessel of the potter shall they be broken into shivers, even as I received of my Father. <clears throat> you see, that church, what will it be when that dark age church rises to stand in judgment against that pagan bunch of back there? Will they be rode down? That brass seed will tramp right through there. I tell you, you break them into shivers, the Bible said. <clears throat> and I will give unto him the morning star. You know what that is, don't you? Christ is the morning star. All right. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Oh, my. Aren't you glad? Amen. It's just a little bit later. I have some more. I'll pick it up maybe tomorrow night on this of the 2,000 years there. But... He's the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of ten thousands to my soul. The lily of the valley, in him alone I sing. All I need to cleanse and make me full.
Now, the things that I miss getting to will be in the books, of course, because we can't bring a whole church age in one night. I kind of quieten it down a little night on kind of being a teeny bit hoarse. But, oh, isn't he wonderful? Oh, mm. There are people almost everywhere whose hearts are all on flame. With the fire that fell on Pentecost that cleansed and made them clean. Oh, it's burning now within my heart. Oh, glory to His name. I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of them. Oh, one of them. One of them. I'm so glad that I can say from Chattanooga one night and a plane was down at, at, at Tennessee down there at Memphis. They put me up in that big fine hotel there and called me and said the plane will go out at 7 o'clock next morning. And I was taking some mail down and putting the mailbox coming home, writing back to some of my friends and going down the Holy Spirit said, keep walking. I just kept on, got on down the color district. I stand down and I thought, my, look here, it's time for that plane to go and the Holy Spirit kept saying, keep walking. Just like he did in the woods the other day down there, you know, just keep walking. So I kept on walking. I happened to look way down there, one of those little colored shacks where the colored people's living poor down there. An old Aunt Jemima, typically with a boy's shirt tied around her head, leaning over the like that, and I was going along there saying, mm of them, I'm one of them. I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of them. Oh, hallelujah. And what do you want, Lord? One of them. I'm one of them. You believe me led by the Spirit? Yeah. I'm so glad yeah. that I can say I'm one of them. It's been about 14 years ago now. She looked over the fence. I was about oh, half city block from her, and I seen this old colored lady eye me right down, you know. I just kept on quick saying, started walking on down. I got close to her. Great big tears on her big fat cheeks. She looked at me. She said, Good morning, Parson. I said, how do you do, Auntie? And she said, uh, I turned around, she's laughing, that big smile across her face. I said, how'd you know I was a parson? Down south, you know, a preacher's a parson. I said, I said how'd you know I was a parson? She said, I know you're just coming. Amen. And I said, how do you know that? You know me? She said, no, sir. And she said, I know you're just coming. I said, did you ever hear the story about the Shunammite woman? I said, yes, sir. And she said, well, she said, I was that kind of woman. She said, and the Lord gave me a baby, and I told her, I told him that I'd raise him. She said, I'm a poor woman. I wash and work for the white folks for a living. She said, and he told me that he, he gave me the baby, and I told him I'd raise him. He said, I raised him the best I know how, but said, Parson, you got it amongst the wrong company. He got a disease, and we didn't know nothing about it. He got an advanced stage, and he's dying. And they're on a the bed. said, so he's been unconscious now two days. So the doctor man come and said, done eat up his heart and so forth, got into his bloodstream so bad to have damaged him so that the stuff that they give him wouldn't help him now. And said he's dying. And said, I just can't stand to see him die a sinner. And said, I prayed and I prayed. And said, all night long, I prayed. Said, he's unconscious. He don't know nothing. Said, he hadn't for two days. Said, I prayed. I said, Lord, you give me that baby. And said, like you did the Shunammite woman. Says, where is your life? <laughs> where, is, where, where is something to help me? And said, I fell asleep on my knees. And she said, the Lord spoke to me in my dream. And she said, go out and stand by the gate. And there'd be a man coming down the street wearing a little tan hat and a dark suit. He said, he'll speak to you. And she said, I've been standing here since four daylight. And her back was wet from dew. And she said, and I've seen you come in that tan hat. He said, but you're supposed to be packing a little satchel. I said, I left it in the hotel. And I said, uh, your boy's sick, said he's dying. I said, uh, my name is Branham. I said, do you know me? She said, no, sir, uh, Parson Branham, I, I never heard of you. I said, I pray for the sick. She wasn't interested in that. She didn't want her boy to die a sinner. I walked in. They had an old gate there, the plow porn hanging on, to swing it back. Maybe many of you northerners wouldn't know what it is, but to keep the gate closed. I walked in the house, and a little bitty old two-room looked like a little, what we call a little shotgun house-like. 
sitting there. There's room here, and that's the living room, bedroom, and all together, and the kitchen back there. When I walked in, it's a little white wash place, and nice, stripped down on the side, and clapboard. So then, uh, oh, I believe she had tar paper on top of the roof. I remember seeing that big bubbles like of the dew hanging on top of it. Then when I walked in, there's a sign hanging there across that door that said, God bless our home. Right here in the corner was an old bedstead over here and one over here. There laid a great big fella, not a rug on the floor. Great big boy, big fine looking chap down there. I guess he was a, well, 170 or 80 pounds, close to six foot. And he had the blanket in his hand going, mmm, mmm. And she said, mama's baby. And I thought, mama's baby. And yet he had a he had a social disease, syphilis, and he he was dying. And uh, she kissed him on the forehead and patted him like that. Said, "Mama's baby." Oh, my heart just went big. I thought, yes, no matter how deep you are in sin, you're still her baby. And then I thought, see, no matter how bad off you was, it's still Mama's baby. And I thought, God said, a mother may forget her suckling babe, but I can never forget you. For your name's engraved in the palms of my hand. See? How could it be? I looked at that poor old saint walking around there. You could tell, brother, she didn't have nothing in the house, but she had something in the house that every house in Indiana or everywhere else ought to have in it. Because God. I'd rather have that and have a big fine home with pinup girls and all this vulgar, nasty stuff. Old Bible in there where it's open, old pages rankled in it. I looked at her. And she said, the parson come pray for you, honey. You go, mm, mm, dark, mm. And I said, what's he saying? She says, he doesn't know the doctor man says he's out of his head. Said he thinks he's out in a big sea somewhere. He's rowing a boat and he's lost. And said, that's what I can't stand, parson, to know my baby's dying lost. And she said, I know you come to help me because the Lord done told me so. I said, I'll pray for him. And I said, maybe the Lord will heal him. She wasn't interested in that. She just wanted him to raise up and say that he was saved. That's all. Because so long as he's saved, no matter he has to go anyhow. So sometimes, as long as he's saved, oh, if we could just get that attitude. Amen. That eternal home. Now that she knows she'd live with him again then. So if I could just hear him say he was saved. I said, let's bow down. And she knelt down. And I stuck a hold of his feet. And his feet was real cold and sticky. And I couldn't pull the cover over a little, a little thin blanket she had over him there, and his head on his uh, trunks, you know. And so, he, and he's pulling that back like that, just thinking he was in. He grabbed that and thinking he's pulling oars. He kept saying, "It's so dark, mm. Mm. it's so dark." So, and she tried to talk to him, and he just keeps saying, "It's dark and cold." He's pulling. Then I, I looked at her a little bit, and she knelt down there. I said, "Auntie, would you lead us in prayer?" She said, "Yes, sir." Just she and I and the boy and the Holy Spirit in the room. That old saint, my, when she talked to him, you know what she talked to him before. <laughs> yes, sir. She knew who she was talking to. She said, Lord, I don't know what you're going to do. <laughs> she said, but everything's just the way you said it. <laughs> oh, my. oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad he's still the same Jesus was back there with those saints back in there. He's still the same Jesus today. And um, I never asked her about her religion, where she's Baptist, Pentecostal, or what. That wasn't my business. I was, I was just following the Holy Spirit, and she was doing the same thing. We want to see what he's going to do. So we knelt down, and she started praying. And when she got through praying, she raised up and kissed his head and said, God bless my baby. And uh, she said, Now, will you pray, Parson? And I said, Yes, ma'am. And right then, it was about half past eight, maybe quarter to nine. And I was two miles from the place, and, uh, and the airplane leaving at seven o'clock. Didn't know when it ever get out. So I put my hands over on his feet. I said, Heavenly Father, I don't understand this. You, I, I was supposed to catch an airplane a while ago, nearly an hour and a half ago. You just kept saying, Walk. And this is the only thing that I found yet. And she said that you, she seen me coming. If that, if that was you, Lord, then I don't know what to do but just put my hands over on the boy. He said, oh, Mama. <laughs> said it's getting light in here now. <laughs> About five minutes, man, he's sitting up on the side of the bed with his arms around his mother. I slipped out, run down there, caught a cab, and run over to the hotel to get my uh, uh, 
suitcase and all that go over and just wait me that way a day or two in them days. You know how hard it was right after the war there to get a plane. So I thought I had to wait a couple of days and I got in the cab and run out there at the airport. Just as I got there and said, flight number 196 for Louisville, Kentucky, now leaving. <laughs> God help that airplane on the ground for me like that. Yeah. Well, I believe it. Yeah. About two years, man, I was going down on the train going over to Arizona to the church, to a meeting. And so I had to pick up with Brother Moore and him. And so when I went over there, I stopped there in Memphis. The train pulled in. If you all know how it pulls in, going west like this, and then backs out and takes a turntable and switches off. And them sandwiches on the train, you want about 60 cents a piece for them. I can buy them for 10, 15 cents, you know, out somewhere else. And I, I just wait till the train stop to get me some sandwich. I was going to get me a ha- sack full of hamburgers and really have a jubilee going over there. <laughs> so I jumped out and run out through there real quick to get me a hamburger stand. Look, I should go lay over there about 30 minutes. And so I, I started to get me some hamburgers. And I heard somebody say, hello there, Parson. I looked around, a little red cap standing there, batting his eyes. And I said, don't know me, do you? Don't believe I do, son. Tomorrow I said, look at me good. And I said, yeah. <laughs> I said, I don't believe I know you. He said, I know you. He said, you Parson Branham. And I said, yeah, that's right. I said, you ever been one with me? He said, no, sir. I said, you remember that morning you come down to the house and my mammy's, oh, I said, you're not him. He said, yes, I is. <laughs> yes, I is. He said, Parson, I said, I was healed, sound and well, and not only that, but I was a Christian now. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He said, oh, well. They were gathered in the upper room, all praying in his name. They were baptized with the Holy Ghost, and power for service came. Now, what he did for them that day, he'll do for you. Aren't you glad? I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of them. One of them. Educations and things, so these people may not learn to be or boast of worldly fame. They have all received their Pentecost, baptized in Jesus' name, and are telling now both far and wide his power is yet the same. I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of them. One of them. Seek this blessing that will cleanse your heart from sin. It will start the joy bells ringing and will keep your soul aflame. Oh, it's burning now within my heart. Oh, glory to his name. I'm so glad that I... Now shake hands with somebody front and back and around. Oh, wow.
this Holy Ghost gospel is dripping with blood. The blood is martyrs all down who died for the truth. This Holy Ghost gospel is dripping with blood. Now, what kind of a gospel is it? Like the start of Pentecost, see? The first one to die for this Holy Ghost plan was John the Baptist. He received his mother's womb, you know. Died like a man. Then came the Lord Jesus. They crucified him. He preached that the Spirit would save men from sin. Kept dripping with blood, yes, dripping with blood. This Holy Ghost gospel is dripping with blood. The blood of disciples who died for the truth. This Holy Ghost gospel is dripping with blood. You couldn't organize it. There's Peter and Paul and John the Divine. They gave up their lives so this gospel could shine. They mingled their blood with the prophets of old so the true word of God could honest be told. Kept dripping with blood, yes. Dripping with blood, this Holy Ghost gospel is dripping with blood, the blood of disciples who died for the truth. This Holy Ghost gospel kept dripping with blood. There was souls under the altar. Crying, how long for the Lord to punish those who've done wrong? But there's going to be more who'll give their life's blood for this Holy Ghost gospel and its crimson flood keeps dripping with blood. Pentecost and the martyrs of Pentecost, down in the church of Ephesus, down into Pergus, down into Thyatira, over into to, um, the uh, Sardis, in the Ephesian, or the um, uh, uh, Philadelphia, and all down into the Laodicean. And now, what we happen down here, as the Bible said, everything come in and this beast would rise up in the United States. You remember the vision that was read here? 19 and 33, I was going, the church wasn't even built. Didn't know what a vision was, called it a trance. I was just a young Baptist preacher. And we were, all my life, I saw those visions. And I'll ask anybody to rise and say if every one of them ever failed. No, Amen. never did. It, it can't. It won't. And now, and as I started the Sunday school, I fell into a trance. We had to go over here at the old Masonic home, Charlie Kern's place little group of us. And i seen this President Roosevelt leading the world to a world war. Predicted. I said, and there's three isms, the Nazi and the fascism and communism. I said, how many of you remember? I said, keep your eyes on communism. It'll all head up in there. I said, Ethiopia, uh, Mussolini will go to Ethiopia, but he'll fail. I said, we'll finally go to war with Germany. But I said, Germany will be fortified in, in a great big bunch of concrete, 11 years before the Maginot Line was built. 11 years. 
I said, then after the war, we'll finally win it. And after the war is over, it'll come to pass that science will be inventing great things. Now, I said, when they do, they'll make an automobile, and automobiles will continually shape down. You know what they look like in 33. Now, they said they'll become like eggs, look like eggs. For I seen on a highway, a great master highway, a car going down the road that didn't have any steering wheel in it. It was controlled by power. They got it right now. Amen. I said, during that time, now they're permitting women to vote. And women in voting will finally, I said, this nation is a woman's nation. It's marked by a woman. It's a woman right down through prophecy everywhere in number 13. Everywhere in prophecy. And I said, it's a woman's country. She has her liberty share and she'll ruin it. She's a ruination of the world. And Roy, I got your letter on that, that great woman. At every criminal case, we've got X rated down now to every criminal case has ever done this in the United States, a woman was behind it. Exactly right. That's immoral women you see. Now, so then I said, they will be in that time. During that time, the women will be permitted to vote and they'll elect the wrong person. They did it on this last election. Amen. Right. Which will start the stronghold. During that time, it'll come to pass that, that there'll be a great woman rise up in the United States. She'll be beautifully dressed. And I got princess, perhaps a Catholic church, see, that'll take rulership over the power, overpower the others in the United States. She'll be beautiful to look at, but she'll be cruel-hearted as she can be. I said, then I looked again, and I saw the United States just blow to pieces. There wasn't nothing left on it. And I predicted then. Now, this, that was thus saith the Lord. And think, a five of those seven predictions has already happened. The church to take a hold, the Catholic church, and the coming of the end time. And I said, I seen look like his stumps are burning, rocks blowed out, and the whole United States just looked bare, laying like as far as I could see where I was standing. And I said, I predict according to the way time is moving, it'll be sometime between this year, 33 and 77, and it'll have to squeeze awful hard to get through there. Amen. We're sitting on a powder keg, friend. Amen. Everything's ready. Oh, but our precious heavenly Father. Who promised? Who promised? Isn't it wonderful to be a servant of Christ? Amen. All the things that He promised, and think we have the privilege of living right here, Him right with us now. Yeah. Knows every secret of every heart. Knows all about some flaming fires going right through our hearts. Knows all about us. Loves us. And aren't you glad to be in that little minority group tonight that keeps the faith? For it was His commandment: Fear not, little flock. Yeah. It's your Father's goodwill to give you the kingdom. And except this work would be cut short, there would be no flesh saved. See, uh, we're right at the end time. The Pentecostals becoming cold off, lukewarm, spurted from the mouth of God. Just a little bitty group pulled out here. Just a few. But in that will come the... Behold the bridegroom coming. Amen. And when it does, every one of these watches Every watch of these watches, to remember there's seven watches of them, and we're right in this last watch. But every one of those virgins back to here rose. Amen. Amen. <laughs> oh, what was it? The same Holy Spirit. Amen. Then, when the church is gone in like we took Sunday night, <coughs> Joseph, to make himself known to Israel, his brother, he dismissed his bride. Everything is sent back into the palace. And he stood alone with the Jews and said, I'm Joseph, your brother. Part it right over the scripture where it said, it said a day of mourning in every house, mourning to itself. He said, where'd you get them scars? Said in the hands of, and your hands said, in the house of my friends. They that pierced him shall look upon him. There he stands, said Joseph. He said, don't, said Joseph said, don't be angry with yourselves because God did it to preserve life. What? The life of the church. The Gentile. For his namesake, a people Amen. out of the Gentiles. Yes. Oh, we're at the end, my brethren. We're Amen. here. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Let's sing this good old song as Pentecostal brothers and sisters together. Now you say, well, I'm a Baptist, but if you got the Pentecostal blessing, you're Pentecostal. <laughs> All right. All right. Blessed be the time that by.
friends, if there's anyone here among us that if any were down long life's journey, that a little bitterness has come in your heart. Hear me. Get it out of there now. Amen. Get that. Don't never let nothing... People, I speak this hour unto thee, as my prophet has stood in the midst of thee and has declared my holy word. I speak unto thee even now by my spirit, says the Almighty God. For I say unto thee, my people that out in this world tonight, uh, yea, I have spoken days gone by concerning these things. Uh, even this very hour of their great plans being made. Uh, yea, that shall bring the hour of destruction upon this fair land. Uh, yea, even in this world tonight there are spiritual forces being gathered together. Uh, that shall come against thee, my people. Uh, but I say unto thee, be thou not discouraged in that day nor hour. Uh, for I say that I am the great Almighty God. Uh, yea, even as I took my children from the land of bondage. Uh, yea, even as I brought them into the wilderness and to the promised land. Uh, even so shall I take thee home with me. Uh, and I say unto thee, my people, uh, be thou not discouraged, uh, but put thy trust in the Almighty God. Uh, for I say that I have loved thee with my great love, uh, and I have called thee out of the world of sin, uh, that thou might be my chosen people, uh, and that in thee I might manifest my power and glory. And I speak these words tonight unto thee, uh, that thou might be encouraged. Uh, the Lord. Jesus, we thank you for these messages. It stirs us, Lord, knowing that we have not shunned but have kept the faith. Oh, I pray, God, that the Spirit continue to stay in the church. Keep us close to one another, Father. Keep us with you. Walk among us, Lord, in this last candlestick age that we're living in. Be our light. Shine forth upon us this great times of darkness, Lord. While we realize that candlesticks and stars speak of darkness. And Lord, we're glad that we're children of light, walking in the light of God. We're not earthbound with these things of the earth, but we are your children. How we thank you for these things. We thank you for sending these messages as confirmation of your word. May you always be honored among us, Father. May you keep us from all bitterness of the earth. Keep us sanctified that our lives will be pure and clean and holy before you. Let the blood of Jesus Christ do this for every one of us, Lord. Take from among us, if there be anything at all that's not right, take it from us, Lord. This is the hour of searching time. These meetings are meant for that purpose, to search our hearts. You said them flames of fire of your eyes searched out and know the reins of the heart. You certainly do, Father. And speak back to us and then telling us to make, keep ourselves ready that the hour is arriving. Oh, how we thank you for this, Father. We will do that with all that is in us by your grace. Amen. Oh, don't you love him? Yes. Now, if there would be a stranger among us, that's the way it was at the beginning. Amen. When Jesus is here on earth, he said, somebody asked him about a marriage and divorce case or something. He said, it wasn't so from the beginning. You have to go back to the beginning. Then if the beginning was a Pentecostal church, and he's the vine, we're the branches. Every time that vine brings forth the church, it'll be a Pentecostal Pentecostal branch. Same thing it was at the beginning, See, each time. Now, you can draft other vines into it, it'll bear its fruit. You can take a, a orange tree and put a lemon on it, it'll bear lemons, living off the orange life. Put a grapefruit beside it, it'll bear grapefruit because it's the citrus fruit. So these organizations, denominations and things, stuck out there calling Christians, they can live by the Christian life. That's exactly right. But they'll bear denominational fruits. Right. Because they're stuck out like that. But if that branch itself ever puts forth a, or if that vine ever puts forth a branch, it'll, be, it'll write a book of Acts behind it. 
That's exactly right. Hallelujah. Because that's what happened the first time. Yeah. Every branch that puts forth itself will have oranges. Every one. And the Bible has spoken. It has 12 branches on it. Oh, I'm so glad to be living under that branch, aren't you? Yeah. Yes, sir. Oh, it's wonderful. All right. Remember, tomorrow night now, on the age of Phil of um, Sardis, the day coming forth of the Lutheran organization, Martin Luther King.